stay here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My guest tonight is an author and Emmy-winning journalist who hosts The Rachel Maddow Show. Please welcome Rachel Maddow. <laughs> Too. Been too long. I always enjoy Ooh. talking to you. As I have said many times before, you are the preeminent person in the news media who can come on and lay out a problem or a news story like parts on the lawn and just put it back together for everybody so they understand not just what's happened, but what the source of that moment is. And Thank you. right now, you, 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 you may have seen, like we talked about in the monologue tonight, that there are clear signs that uh, Donald Trump and his people are at least fascist curious. You know? Yeah. Yes. There's just yes. a whiff of leather boot in there. <laughs> and and you got you got this new book that uh, I uh, am really enjoying called Prequel, an American Fight Against Fascism. Okay. Um, well timed. I was just gonna say I did not mean it to be this well timed. I feel like we have been in this moment where there is an ascendant anti-democratic movement in our politics. And it can be very flummoxing and very concerning. For me, it actually helps to know that Americans before us faced something just as bad or worse and did very well against it. Um, that is the hopeful nature of this yes. book, which, which I want to get into in just a moment. Yeah. But first, I want to ask you about what's been happening recently. On, on Veterans Day, on a Veterans Day speech, Trump called the left vermin and fascists. And you know a two thing about fascists in this book. Why do you think he's leaning into these comparisons? Yeah, I think it's important that it very clearly wasn't an ad lib. This wasn't something that uh, he riffed on. It was seemed to have been in his teleprompter. It was 100 minutes into the speech. And uh, he, after the speech, then posted it with the same language on truth whatever, his online yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and so this means that this is not a slip of the tongue. This is something that he's doing deliberately. And if, like, if you know one thing about fascist dictators of yore, you know that they call the people they want to eliminate vermin, right? You know, you know that dehumanizing language is the yes. thing. It's like the cartoon language of, of fascism. And so I think that he's deliberately doing that. And so Trump did that at the same time that we've had these leaks, kind of official leaks from his campaign that he wants to build camps for millions of people, um, that he wants Professional to... camps, though. Professional looking camps. I like <laughs> yes, the no yeah, crocs exactly. element. It's, it's, it just <laughs> classes it up a lot. Yeah. But camps for millions of people in Americans. He also wants to invoke something called the Insurrection Act, which would allow him to use US military force against American civilians at home. And he says he's gonna invoke that on day one, which would give him, from that day forward, the ability to use the army against us at home. Um, so doing... Floating all of those things at once and calling his opponents vermin, he's deliberately inviting the criticism that he is behaving like a Hitler or Mussolini-style fascist. Well, he, he must think that that's a good thing for him and his campaign. And um, my, my question to you is, from what you've learned about studying fascist movements and fascist movements in America, is given that fascism is essentially an attractively lazy political tool, why do you think it has so many people on the right in America right now interested in it? Well, I think that he's inviting us to call him a fascist and he's doing these things so that... I so mean, I just he, played into his hand, is what you're saying? Well, I am too. I mean, nothing, you can't ignore it, right? You don't have a choice. He is yanking our chain. He does want to be talked about in these terms. But it's also, it's important that you pointed out that he, in that speech, also called his critics fascists. He wants fascists just to become a random political epithet, just an insult that everybody uses that means nothing. In the same way that he took fake, fake news was a thing. But then he decided all news is fake news. And now fake news is just this term that means nothing. Well, because there can be no uh, authority other than the authoritarian. And so no one can label him with anything, including something as accurate as fascist. So that all ha meaning has to be undermined. That's what George yes. Orwell talks about. There, there can be no meaning to anything other than what the state says the meaning is. That's exactly right. So okay. he's sapping those words of their meaning, so we can't criticize him by calling him a fascist because he says everything's fascist. And there's also the, the, the ongoing thing on the, the modern Republican Party, which is every accusation is a confession. No puppet, no puppet, you're a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it goes, this is, this is the way 
he works. But this is, he's part of a, it's not just about him. He's trying to build an anti-democratic movement in this country where people want a strong man um, to hold power by force rather than for us to use elections. And it is we, appealing because yeah. it, you know, it's simple. Yeah. Just do what the strong man says. I alone can fix it. Yeah. We need to talk our fellow Americans out of that as an idea without paying any attention to him. Now, today, today in the Senate, there was actual threat of violence yeah. in the Senate today. Um, how does that make you feel about the state of our democracy? <laughs> I, uh, I feel like this is one of those things where it's obviously hilarious, because it's so stupid. Yes. Um, like, that guy just absolutely, you see him try to take off his ring? Sure. <laughs> Sure. Because like, he wouldn't want to hurt the other guy. Oh, exactly. He wouldn't want to dent your ring. I mean, what is he talking about? It's so stupid and hilarious and also super scary and bad. And that's our lives now. That's the Venn diagram where we live right in the middle of super stupid and really bad. Um, because, I mean, the thing that's bad is that one of the things you watch for in a democracy in danger is for violence to start encroaching on the political space. People doing normal political things, going to a hearing, being a poll worker, or certifying an election result, those people are intimidated or threatened with violence or actually subjected to violence. When that starts happening, it means normal people get out of politics and it becomes a place for brawlers and for people to take power by force. That's one of the big warning signs. And for these guys to be playing with it literally inside the Senate is so stupid and also so bad. And almost made Bernie bring the hammer down, yeah. you know? Yeah. Bring that little, little Vermont vengeance down on these two guys. I gotta say. His <laughs> friends, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> okay. We have to take a quick break, uh, but don't go away. We'll be right back with more Rachel Maddow, everybody.